Hey there, and welcome to Raylene Math. In this video, we're going to take a look at two examples where we calculate the tangent slope using the limit definition. In the first example, we'll actually calculate a value for the slope to the function f of x at x equal to 4, and we're going to do it in two different ways. In the second one, we're going to calculate a function which represents the tangent slope at any point um, at the domain of the function. So let's take a look at the first example. Given the function f of x, uh, which is 3 over x minus 1, we first want to see, does that function even have a tangent line when x is equal to 4? So we're going to do that by looking at its graph. And we're going to zoom in at the point x equal to 4 and y equal to 1. And if we zoom in far enough, we notice that this graph does indeed look like a line. And so that is the tangent line with a single finite, therefore defined slope. So just keeping in mind that we have this tangent line, we want to find its slope, and we're going to do that using the first definition. So here we go. We set up our limit of the secant slope as the x-coordinate called x approaches a. In this case, the given x-coordinate of x equal to 4 is the a value. So we're going to set up our two points. Let's call the first point the point of tangency a, and a is located at 4 comma f of 4. And so if we substitute 4 in for x, we get that this point is located at 4, 1. And the second point, the point that is going to move towards the first point, is going to be located at x, f of x. And so we're going to use our big concept of calculus that the tangent slope is equal to the limit as the x-coordinate of the second point approaches the x-coordinate of the first point, or the point of tangency, of the delta y over delta x secant slope expression. And so we get y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And so we make our substitution here and we see that this f of x function gets replaced with 3 over x minus 1. And so at this point we can recognize that all of this expression here is some function. Not f of x, it's a different function. Maybe it's called g of x. And so g of x, um, I won't bother writing it all out, it's that whole big bubble. But if we were to substitute 4 in for x, we would get 3 over 4 minus 1, it's 3 over 3, and 1 minus 1 is 0, all over the denominator, which is 0. And so we know that this is going to need determining this limit value. And so the clue is in the algebra. When we look for the verbs of what we have to do, we see that we are dividing some things, we are subtracting some fractions, and so that suggests that we get a common denominator. So let's go ahead and get a common denominator of the top, and when we do that, we end up getting 3 minus x minus 1 all over x minus 1. Now that numerator is all divided by x minus 4. So the next thing I want to do is tidy up my fraction within a fraction. So we end up getting the limit as x approaches 4 of, I can also work out this numerator, but I'm just focus on the denominator for a minute. The x minus 1 and the x minus 4 multiply together, and the reason for that is instead of dividing by x minus 4, I could multiply by the reciprocal 1 over x minus 4. So we see that these two linear denominators multiply together, or these two linear factors. And the top gives us 3 minus x plus 1, which is going to be 4 minus x. Now, we had a 0 over 0 indeterminacy when we directly substituted here, if you recall that, which suggests that if the limit does exist, we have a common factor. And the common factor is going to occur at x minus 4. Or rather, the common factor is x minus 4 occurring when x is 4. And so we see that common factor. We just need to do a little bit of careful factoring because we have a negative common factor in the, or negative to be factored out in the top. And so that gives us the x minus 4s in the top and the bottom reduce as long as x does not equal to 4, which it's not trying to. x is only approaching 4 rather than being equal to 4. And so now we can directly substitute because we have reduced the indeterminacy which occurred because of the common factor of x minus 4. When we substitute the 4 in, the numerator is negative 1, and then 4 minus 1 gives us 3. So we have a tangent slope of negative 1 third. What we're going to do now is write the equation of the tangent line over in the graphing program. And we see that that equation would be y minus the y-coordinate of 1 
equal to the slope of negative one-third multiplied by x minus four for the point slope form. I'm actually going to take that negative one to the other side as a positive one and I'll write the tangent line like that. Now it's really hard to guarantee that we have the right tangent line um, but graphically or visually we're going to take a look by zooming in far enough and see if the two graphs eventually look the same. So there I have clicked on the point and when I zoom in it seems reasonable to suggest that graphically these this is the tangent line to the given curve. So let's take another look using the second method. Here we're going to do the same thing, calculate the slope at point A, but in this case our point of tangency is the same, but our second point has a new name. Uh, the second point is going to have an x-coordinate of A plus H, and so that's going to be 4 plus H and then the y-coordinate is going to be the x-coordinate substituted into the function f of 4 plus h. And so we get point B is located at 4 plus h, comma. Let's see, we're going to get a fraction. 3 over 4 plus h minus 1 is going to be 3 plus h. And so we use that to substitute into the big concept, which says the limit as h approaches 0 of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 3 over 3 plus h minus y1, f of a, is 1, all over 4 plus h minus x1, which is 4. So we can simplify this and we get the limit as h approaches 0. Um, the denominator is going to be simply h and the numerator, again, we are going to have probably to get a common f denominator with the fractions. So we can make this 3 over 3 plus h minus 3 plus h over 3 plus h. Now we should probably do a direct substitution. This is some other function, not f, but maybe g. And when we substitute h equal to 0 into this function, we end up getting 3 over 3, 3 over 3 minus 3 over 3, which is 0 all over 0. So again we have to find the source of the indeterminacy by doing something. We already started that process by getting a common denominator. So here we're going to have, I'm going to put that h denominator in front as the reciprocal 1 over h multiplied by the rest of the fraction. My common denominator is 3 plus h and then we have 3 minus open bracket 3 plus h. A really common source of mistake here is not to use brackets and then only to change the sign of the first term instead of both of the terms. So then we continue and we end up getting the limit as h approaches 0. Notice that 1 over h is the variable of the limit and it's not a constant that can come in front. Now we get 3 minus 3 and then minus h. So I'm going to simplify my 3 minus 3 already and then I'll have negative h over 3 plus h. Now this is really nice because we can already see the common factor, the one that caused the indeterminacy. And so I'm going to reduce that common factor, keeping in mind that there's a negative 1 factor left in the numerator. Now when we directly substitute, the source of the indeterminacy is gone and we have an answer of negative 1 third. So we've already confirmed graphically that we had that as the slope but here's just another reminder of that picture. We've got the tangent line whose equation was given by y minus 1 equals negative 1 third times x minus 4. And when we zoom in far enough, we start to see that the line and the curve begin to look alike. The second example is different because now we're going to find the tangent slope as a formula or a function of x instead of a numerical value. So here's the graph of the function y equals 2x over x squared plus 1 and we are going to confirm our solution by plugging in three different x values once we get the formula. So we're going to use this version of the big concept of the secant slope turning into the tangent slope. Uh, we have our two points. Point A is the point of tangency located when the x-coordinate is simply called x and then the y-coordinate will be called f of x or 2x over x squared plus 1. And then the second point that allows us to create the secant line occurs for the x-coordinate of x plus h and the y-coordinate is called f of x plus h. 
So we need to do a little bit of substitution here to get that second y coordinate. And so we're everywhere we have x, we're going to replace x with x plus h into the function. So we get x plus h all squared in the denominator, keeping it in brackets for now. So now our secant slope is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. Remember this really came from the second x-coordinate approaching the first x-coordinate, which is the second point of the secant line approaching the point of tangency for the x-coordinates. So we are going to let h approach 0 of this following secant slope or delta y over delta x fraction. So I'm going to take y2 minus y1. And there's a lot of algebra here, so we just have to go slowly and be careful with it using brackets. And we're going to get minus y1, which is 2x over x squared plus 1. And all of that is going to be over x2 minus x1, which is just h. Okay, so we have a couple things to consider, but the first thing we should think, we've just got an expression here, or a function. This circled function is no longer the function f, it's some other function, we might call it g. And g depends on two unknowns, both x and h. And what we're going to be doing is substituting when h is equal to zero. And so we would get some expression in terms of x. If h is e equal to zero, we see that the first term and the second term of the, de of the numerator are the same. And the denominator is just 0, so we end up getting an indeterminate expression when h is substituted equal to 0. So our goal is to determine it. So what we can do is look inside that expression and see that there's some verbs here. Again, we are subtracting two fractions, so the strategy we might choose is to get a common denominator. We really want to write this in a different way that allows us to see the source of that indeterminacy when h is equal to 0, and hopefully we can reduce that. What we're looking for, because h equal to 0 has a common factor, or has a factor of h, we're really expecting that there's going to be an h common factor in the top and the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video and give you a chance to try getting the common denominator and check in with you in a minute. So I've tidied up the fraction giving me a bit more space to work. The numerator has a common factor of 2 and it's a constant so I've taken that common factor constant outside of the limit. I also rewrote my very denominator h as the reciprocal 1 over h and now I'm multiplying it by the rest of the numerator fraction. So now I'm working on this numerator fraction and I got a common denominator over here and you can see the common denominator as the product of the two individual denominators. So once I got the common denominator um, I'm going to expand it and see what happens. So I'll pause the video again and let you check and try on your own and check in in a minute. So I've taken some time and some care here. It's really algebra heavy. I expanded this uh, square bracket first by squaring the binomial and then I distributed the negative x throughout all four of these terms. So again be careful to distribute the negative not just through the first term, but through all four terms. And I also just made one denominator. I multiplied the h all the way through. So now I'm going to take this term and simplify it. I have an x cubed and a negative x cubed. I have a positive x and a negative x. And then the remaining terms all involve h, which is interesting because then I have a common factor of h, which I said I was looking for so that it allowed me to reduce the indeterminacy when h is equal to 0. So from here I'm going to simplify it again, rewrite the common factor. I'll pause the video and give you a chance to try it on your own and we'll check in in a minute. So I've got it down to here so far. I saw that there was a common or common term, like terms, so I was able to combine them by adding the or subtracting coefficients. And then every term has a common factor of h, so I factored it out, I reduced, and now I'm able to directly substitute. So I'll have 2 times the fraction when x is equal to 0 rather than when h is equal to 0. Uh, this third term is 0 and that term is 0 and so I end up with negative x squared plus 1 in the top all over x squared plus 1 multiplied by another x squared plus 1. And so this is a formula that doesn't depend on h anymore, it's simply a function of x. So I'll tidy it up 
we get x squared plus 1 squared in the denominator and I'm going to write the 1 in front because I like to lead with a positive term and just for convenience I'll simplify by distributing the 2 through. There's nothing else to reduce. So to confirm that we have the right tangent slope formula or function of x, we are going to take three different x coordinates, plug them in, and then sketch the tangent line. I'm going to introduce you to the idea of ordered triples, which is just one more piece of information from an ordered pair. It gives us the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the slope of the tangent line so that we can write the equation in point slope form. And we're going to do this with three different x coordinates. In general, the ordered triples are going to be given by x in this function, 2x over x squared plus 1 for the y coordinate, and 2 minus 2x squared all over x squared plus 1 all squared. And so we're going to first of all substitute x equal to 0. So the ordered triple is going to give us 0, substituting 0 for the other pieces gives us 0 for y and 2 for the tangent slope, which gives us a point slope form of y minus 0 equals 2 times x minus 0, or simply y equals 2x. So let's take a look at the graph and see if we don't get that correct tangent line equation. I'm just going to change these coordinates for x and y from the defaults of 1 and 1 and change the slope from the default of 1 to 2. So now we have a 0 for h and k, 2 for m, and we have our tangent slope here. If we zoom in, if we have found the correct tangent slope and therefore the correct tangent line equation, the blue graph should look like the tangent line when we zoom in far enough. I think that matches. So let's go back and confirm this for the next point, which is going to be at x equal to 1. So now when x is equal to 1, the ordered triples will be 1 for x, 1 for y, and a tangent slope of 0, which means we should be getting a horizontal tangent line. And the right-hand side is completely equal to 0, so y equal to 1 is a horizontal line, corresponding with a 0 slope. So let's take a look at that equation. I can replace the x and the y coordinates here with 1 each, and then the slope is 0. Or I can simply write the equation y equal to 1. And so if I zoom in at that point, far enough, I see that the blue curve looks like its tangent line of y equal to 1 when we zoom in far enough. The last point we will check is when x is equal to negative 3. And so we have a different ordered triple. The x coordinate is negative 3. Substituting negative 3 in for the y coordinate or into the function of x, we will end up with negative 3 fifths. And substituting x equals negative 3 into the tangent slope formula, we get negative 4 twenty fifths. And this gives us y minus negative 3 fifths, or y plus 3 fifths, equals negative 4 over 25 times x minus negative 3. So typing that point slope equation into the program, we get y plus 3 fifths is equal to negative 4 over 25 for the slope times x plus 3. And I think I've not used brackets here, so let me just edit that x plus 3. Okay, so we have a point of tangency. I'm just going to drag it a bit to the center and click onto that point. You might have a bit of trouble clicking onto the point, so I'm just going to use a vertical line slide down to trace. Now when we zoom in, the blue curve should look like the red tangent line when we zoom in far enough. I'm pretty convinced that these three examples show me that I've come up with the correct tangent slope for three examples and therefore in general. So there you have it. If you like the video, click like down below and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for checking out Raylene Math.